everyone, and welcome to Tilts, the interesting liquid talk show. I'm your host, Ian Sansevera. I also go by Not Ian Sans. I am the director of post-production for 1UP Studios. If this is your first time listening to or watching Tilts, welcome. If you're a returning listener or watcher, welcome. You can find us on all of your favorite podcasting applications. We are on all of them. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure to give us a five-star review if you thought it was worthy of a five-star review. If you'd like to watch Tilts with your eyeballs, you can find us at youtube.com slash Team Liquid, where the video version is available. Today on Tilts, we will be talking to one of the best bot lanes in North America for League of Legends. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Tactical and Core JJ will be joining us on the show. And spoiler alert, they have re-signed their contracts with Team Liquid for the 2021 LCS season, and we're all excited about it. For those of you that are listening out there or watching out there and don't know who Core JJ and Tactical are, let me just rattle off a few statistics for you. Core JJ, he is the 2020 Summer MVP of the LCS. He is a two-time LCS MVP, two-time world finalist and world champion on Samsung Galaxy in Season 7. He is the MSI finalist with Team Liquid, and he is well-known for his playmaking and incredible shot calling, and I like his glasses and his hair. That's not on the list, but I told you anyway, tactical. He is the LCS Rookie of the Year in 2020, LCS Academy Champion in 2019, and he made it to the world's main stage his first year in the LCS, which is very impressive. And he's got a nice smile and he's fun to talk to. Poor JJ and tactical, thank you so much for being on Tilts. Yep, thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here too. Uh, so spoiler alert to all of the people that are listening or watching at home, Core and Tactical have re-signed to Team Liquid for the 2021 LCS season. So congratulations, boys. Round of applause where it's due. Happy to have you back. Uh, another big congratulations, Core. You just got engaged yesterday, I think, or very recently. Tell me about that. Uh, a few days ago, I proposed to my girlfriend. So now you're engaged. Did, you're yep. engaged I mean, I'm engaged. Married. I engage it, yeah. Are you are you excited? How long have you been planning that? I've been planning this for like three, two years, kind oh, of wow. since I get in NA because yeah. she was in Korea, I was in NA. The way we stay together, the best way we stay together, yeah, is get married, and then there's no reason not to do. So when it, when is the actual wedding? When are you planning to do that? Like now, I'm not planning to do wedding we just we're gonna just sign mm, okay yeah so just well, legally not, get married not, and then you'll figure that yeah, out later legally get married. yeah gotcha so we're planning for that for now nice speaking of signing y'all just signed your contracts again so let's transition into that beautiful <laughs> transition signing a marriage license signing to uh <sighs> team liquid again uh tactical let's start with you you had uh, a, a pretty insane rookie season on the organization and so coming back into 2021 uh you were asked to resign and you said yes. So why did you say yes? I had initially signed the my contract at in between spring and summer split. So then I was like I was basically trying to prove my like my loyalty to the org and showing how like I wanna try to prove and you know basically like just like establish a relationship where they could trust me to do well and the other way around. I definitely think you did that. Certainly. Uh, Core, same question to you. Uh, you also resigned to Team Liquid. So, what was your reasoning for for resigning with the organization? So, <clears throat> actually, I I've been playing pretty good season with uh, Team Liquid, like so far, and you know, I just like Team Liquid. <laughs> so far, I've been here. Yeah, you signed a, you signed a three year contract last year, so you're you're kind of locked in, but. Yeah. As everyone knows, you know, if you're if you're unhappy somewhere, then you can kind of get out of your contract. Somebody can mm -hmm. buy you out of your contract. But that doesn't seem to be the case here. Uh, I feel like you guys yeah. have really good, really good synergy in the bot lane. Obviously, Corey, you had to, you know, switch partners halfway through the split. Tactical came in. What were you initially mm -hmm. like? What did you know about him when he first came in to, to play with you in the bot lane? Did you I, I, you guys were already like duo queuing together, right? At some point? We didn't play really well in, when, when Tactical came in. Uh, it was like kind of new, like refreshing our team, and then I and then I knew I knew he was he was really good, and then I knew he's gonna play really well in Asia. So didn't feel super different. Like I I'm gonna I need to play with a rookie or something. I didn't think like that. Well, that's good. He didn't think you were a rookie. Tactical. That's good. You made it. You made it past the <laughs> the gaze of Core I mean, JJ. Approved. 
Yeah, you, yeah, you, you got the check mark of approval. Well, what was it like for you, Tactical, playing with Core JJ in those in those early days? I was really nervous. <laughs> at start. Really? Because I was, yeah, because I was just, uh, I was really bad, and I didn't really know anyone that was like, you know, like up there, you know. So at first, I was really nervous, but now I'm fine. I would say you've handled your nerves uh, as a rookie, right? I, I even hate using the word rookie. It's like so like, oof, geez, rookie. But I'd say you you handled your nerves in your rookie season uh, as a pro player really well uh, based on all the things that you've kind of gone up against. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about worlds in a little bit. Um, but Corey, you've kind of, you've mentioned before that you had a desire to kind of create a legacy in North America. You want North America to win a mm-hmm. world championship. And um mm-hmm. You know, we we did okay this year at Worlds. Again, we'll talk about it in a little bit. But what are kind of your goals this year? Like, how are we going to go farther in 2021 than we did in 2020, in your opinion? Like, in, in 2020, Worlds, it shows, like, kind of price path and best path for NHS. The one thing that we show that we can actually compete to the actual top team like what we did and then what Flycast did. And then, yeah, of course, there is the opposite way. But at, at least I think we have a high ceiling. We need to, like, we need to build a consistent, like, we need to level up our, our like, standard, like, basic skill levels mm-hmm. for the every legions. Then, you know, at some point, we play pretty well. When we have good luck. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Did, did you think, uh, and Tactical, I'll kick this over to you. Did you think it was like a skill discrepancy? Like, were, were the other teams just like so much better than North American teams? Or where where were you kind of on that? Um, I wouldn't. I would say um, part of it is skill discrepancy. Um, obviously, these teams are like, these players are like generally seen as more skilled because their region has had better results or like people will value the solo queue more or whatever. So, but I do think there was actually some skill discrepancy, and the teams like performance can change like day to day sometimes, like depending on how players' conditions are. So like, it might depend on like who shows up on the day of the match, because I think that's like a thing where some players are just not there, some players like show up randomly. They're, like, it's kind of RNG in a way, but you know if you keep doing well and like keep maintaining your like good condition, I think you could have a more consistent way. Well, Corey, you said something interesting. You said that you need to kind of raise your skill level, right? And um, yeah, how how is I hear a lot of teams and players complaining in North America that it is hard to raise your skill ceiling in a region where like other people view it as like low skill, right? So how how do you plan on raising the skill ceiling for next year uh, while still competing in North America? Is there a way to do it? I always think that complaining doesn't solve any problem unless you actually do something and then I know as as a player, I don't know like the other thing, probably organization or the Liar Games will trying to solve the problem. But as a player what I need to do is pra- practice really hard in my situation. So at least uh, trying to watch the other listens and trying to the copies how they play probably that elevate our skills at least. How about you, Tactical? How are you planning on raising your skill ceiling next year? Keep playing the game because as Core said, you just have to play under the given circumstances you're in. And <clears throat> one thing I noticed from the differences from the other region solo queue and the NA was the big the bigger difference for me wasn't like the ping, it was more about the gameplay. Um, I, I'm sure I agree that like ping can like change some things and make some, some people have sharper mechanics. But uh, for me, the biggest difference I noticed when I came back was uh, the difference in play play style and like how how like game feels. So I mean, for me, I'm just gonna keep playing and try to like keep playing my own game and not like get sucked into like a certain mindset just by playing an NA or something. Um, cause I, for example, when I had to play in China, so I had to adjust how I like saw the game a little bit in so So I just want to try to keep like playing that 
game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out on that a little bit because you're actually in Korea right now. You came back to the <laughs> States after Worlds and then you went to Korea. Or did you go yeah. straight to... No, you went to Korea. So yeah, I'm going to call you because you didn't come back to North America and play solo queue. You you went to a region that is notoriously better than NA so that you can like, you know, grind your axe against the cobblestone or whatever it is. So what what was your reasoning to to go to Korea? Like what is what is your motivation for being there right now? Um, I'd say probably in the off season, I don't have a lot of time, like not scrimming or preparing for LCS or anything. Um, it'd probably be more a more efficient use of time to um, practice where a lot of people value like the quality of the solo queue. So basically just traveling 12 hours to spend like a couple of weeks to spend, to use it to play generally uh, seen as higher quality solo queue. And people see it as like a challenge to reach a high LP in Korea. So I want to try to like compete it myself and get as high as I can. But I think challenger in Korea is like around 800 LP. And I think the if you were to have 800 LP in NA, that'll be considered top 100. So it's like kind of a big like difference in like this the ladder and like the like the ratio of scaling. I'm just trying to see how far I can go. Um, Core, what was it you you both kind of started circling around this topic that I want to dive into, which is worlds. Um, we we had the same record as the other NA team that went. We won't talk about TSM because that was disgusting, but. Um, you know, you, you notice these things and I think, you know, even me as a casual viewer, you kind of notice that the game is played differently at that level. Like watching world's games was not anything like I've seen watching games in North America. So from a pro, uh, from a pro player standpoint, core, we'll start with you kind of, what did you learn in those world's games that you're going to like take away and take into next season? Like what was the biggest thing that you kind of noticed? Uh, I mean, biggest thing and and the other listen, like every listen, every year they have a uh, like at least twenty technicals. <laughs> so, so like the rookie players, like give them a uh, like new blood, like new perception of the games, or or like the new killer instincts. So like, I think it's always the same, you know, when when. Samsung won the world. Samsung won world with the same roster. So when we when we won with the same roster, people people thought, oh, keeping same roster and then teamwork is really important to win the world. So many people doing like that right now. Everyone probably must notice that there is new generations are coming, like new Lucas, like Sunings. Like Bean, Angel, Swampong, and like of course all all of Diamond players. Like we need to we need to accept. I think it's it's time to lead compete. Like Bedrang, and then Lucas, and then you know, like now Lucas, they it's not the Lucas means like it's not they couldn't be pro player before, so, and the Bedrangs. What we what we got is like we just born earlier than like now new new Lucas. I think new compete and then more like compete for everything, like compete with other teams, compete for your part in your team. Yeah, everything. Okay. Hi, yeah, high higher competition internally, externally. Tactical. Yeah. What did what did you take away from Worlds this year? What was the one thing that you saw? <clears throat> one thing I thought was the finding a good player recently was uh, always being able to choose the most optimal choice in like every situation and like being really adaptable, and they're able to execute it pretty well. So before I'd say like good player was like like knows how to play the game and like how the game should go and um, like and they have like decent mechanics, good mechanics. But nowadays I think a better player would be like. A better example of a really good player would be like good mechanics. Um, they can execute pretty like flawlessly or pretty cleanly usually, and they're always always able to choose the most optimal situation or optimal decision in like every situation. How do you train that though? You know, you're in a one v one or one v two situation. Like, how do you train your brain? And this could go to both of you, but we'll start with you, tactical. How do you train your brain 
to make the most optimal decision in that moment? Um, I think it really depends on how you like learn a game, because usually, generally, those people who could play pull off those like one twos or like knows the limits or like knows what to do always have really good game sense, and they just play along with it and just keep also keep playing a lot and like keep learning. So these players are like just very. They, I mean, they. I think these kind of players like try hard and it's over cute and they try always new things if they have to or don't know. And I think it's something like game sense, like something. It's just like a given thing, not like something you necessarily learn always. So I guess it's like talent, where if you have game sense or not, as like as much as other players. So, but for me, I just keep playing the game and learn that way. I don't really think like too much about like what to do. I just kind of know. Core, what about you? How do you how do you train your brain to make optimal decisions? Because even like you were saying before, you know, like veterans, you guys have been around for a while. These rookies are coming in here and they might not know how to make those decisions yet. So how do you do it for yourself? And kind of what are you teaching tactical as well? In the game, I kept trying to, you know, compare A and B. Like if I play A play, how much I get. If I play B play, how much I get. Like keep compare which one is higher value. And then, of course, of course, if, when I when I miscalculate, then even though I did do this, we lose more thing. Then that could say, oh, maybe maybe this is not. We I think it's not like a teaching or something. We just keep keep talking and communication. Do you think which one is better? What if uh, what have you learned in in that sense tactical from core playing that way? Because you've been, you know, you've been essentially training with uh, world champion support over here. So as a as a rookie player, kind of, what are the things that he's taught you that you know made you a better player throughout the year? Um, I think since he's pretty good at game, um, when it's like when we're talking about like options and different things we could have done, we usually know like off the bat how much or how what should have happened if we had played it better, or like what should we have, what exactly what should, what should we have gained or lost? It's like. The options are way more clear to talk about. So going going back into worlds, um, tactical. What were you feeling like going into the whole situation, right? Because like you you have a standout season as a rookie on Team Liquid. You got Rookie of the Year, and now you're kind of going into worlds, which you've never done before, right? So kind of where was your head uh, going into the whole thing, and and kind of the very beginning stages of worlds? How were you feeling? Well, before going into Worlds, I was like excited and nervous at the same time because Worlds obviously where all the best players go, so I didn't know what to expect since um, I've never played against like an international player or international event. But after like a week or two, I was like still happy. Um, it wasn't as, the Worlds wasn't as scary as I thought, so I was kind of happy about that. That it wasn't that scary after playing like a few weeks of scrims or or solo queue. <clears throat> And I had like a scary fear that it might be too insane for me, but it was fine in the end, basically. Did you feel like playing through play-ins was really valuable for you as an individual player and you guys as a team? Yeah, for me, the playing the stage games are really useful also, just for experience-wise, because I don't like have that many... Since I literally had zero international games played, playing some games were useful. For a team, I think it was useful too, to like... I basically try to figure out what we want to like do because on the stage match days like you really have to like choose what you want to do and like, how you want to pick champions and stuff so like given like these higher pressure environments we were put in i think it was pretty useful to like put pressure on ourselves to like have to win these games where where did the fear for you exit your body right was it that when you realized that you were actually better than some of these people or like at what point did the fear kind of just like leave you? Uh, left me after two games of play-ins. Really? So, That's it. Yeah. After okay. after I might have been like nervous the first two games. Like, I even misplaced the word like in the first two minutes, like like first three minutes of the game, like game one. Um, but after that, those two games, I never I never felt nervous on stage again. It was just gone, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's good. So you're so for those of you that don't know, Tactical went back to Korea. He is now quarantining again and playing League of Legends in Korea to try to grind that uh, Korean ladder. So uh, when did you get there? You just arrived recently, right? I arrived here 
two days ago from my time. I got I got here on the 29th, but I left the U.S. on the 28th. Mm. Okay. So yeah, so you're you're fresh. You're fresh in there. Yeah. All right. So I'm we're going to do something a little bit different than we've done at Tilts in the past, which is we asked our TL staff to submit some questions for you guys to answer. So in no particular order, I'm going to read some of these questions off uh, so that you guys can answer them. And we'll just kind of go back and forth between you two. Uh, The first one comes from me. Uh, I'll just admit that it's me. I don't have names for anybody else. But the first one comes from me. The show is called Tilts. It stands for the interesting liquid talk show. But I want to know what actually tilts both of you. So tactical. What is the thing that tilts you the most? What tells me the most? It could be anything. Anything. <laughs> anything. Mm. I've got to say, having internet issues is really tilting. Okay. That's pr- because back before I was on a team, I had internet issues at home. And okay, there are times where I just lose games or I can't play the game because of my internet. And it always makes me so mad. Like, it, it, I probably got the most mad at internet issues than anything in the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. Yeah, that's a good one. That makes sense. Corey, you're not allowed to use the same answer. So what, what tilts you the most? I think tactical tilt tilt me. <laughs> <laughs> tactical tilts I, you? I I usually don't get tilt that much, I think. I just get influenced by by my AD carry. <laughs> tilt it together. So he so he absorbs your tilt. All right, so that's that's what we've that's yeah, what we've learned. <laughs> um is there anything about each other that you miss that you didn't realize that you'd miss? Having Core pick up my food for me when we order food together. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to go downstairs by myself and actually like pick it up when we order food. I think I think next year it should be your job. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you graduated, dude. Actually, picking up the food is the hardest thing. Yeah, it's the hardest part about ordering food. <laughs> yeah. It's not, the, it's not ordering- the price. It's not like the order process. It's picking it up. And then you, you also need to wait. Yeah, you, yeah, you cannot I, play the game. That's the hardest part. Yes. That's funny. Core, what do you what do you miss about tactical? I think like for the ears, probably tactical is the most talk to him. Like talk to purse. Mm-hmm. Like other than my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so you just miss yeah. you, you just miss being able to talk to him? Yeah, I just miss yeah, I just miss him. Oh, that's so okay. sweet. Next question. Do you have any funny stories from Worlds that you want to share? So basically, our headsets mm-hmm. have a very small USB dongle to connect to the headset. And when we got to the quarantine uh, event hotel, when we left the quarantine hotel, we already left it. In fact, realized he did not take... <laughs> The thing, the wireless dongle with him to connect the headset. We obviously we got we replaced it with a new one, but we, he didn't like he like completely forgot about it, and like, he mm-hmm. forgets a lot of things. He even forgot like uh, to bring the certain shoes we were supposed to wear. So we also had to bring those from NA, like or, ship it, I think, and and uniform, <laughs> and jersey. Yeah, somehow he didn't forget his jersey. jersey? <laughs> I don't know how. How? We don't know. We don't That's... know. It's always a mystery. <laughs> That's funny. Next question. What was the atmosphere like during the G2 and Sooning game, knowing that like there was nothing you could do about the outcome of group stages? It was really big depression since Pick and Ben. But actually, on the other hand, it was actually kind of fun. Like We can actually cheer on other team like sincerely. Because <laughs> like, it is not normal to be on one team when when other play other teams play so i mean being a fan of team for one hour was pretty fun even <laughs> though it results really bad that's really funny that's yeah. an interesting way to think about it like you are actually sincerely cheering for another team yeah it's like if you're a fan of lcs or a fan of like an lcs team and you want them to win you're watching their match is it kind of like that well, Core said it was it was depression from the pick and ban. Did you already kind of like know that the game was over just from Champ Select? Well, we knew the odds might have been uh, kind of hard for um, G2, well, from our perspectives at least, when they were drafting. So, yeah. All right. We're going we're gonna to wrap this up with some rapid-fire questions, all right? I want quick answers. I'm going to start with Tactical and then go to Core. Tactical, Core every time. Question number one, who's your favorite K-pop group? Tactical. 
Fly pink. Core. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite pizza topping? Tactical. Pepperoni. Core. Pepperoni. Ah, there you go. Uh, last question. What other game do you play the most besides League? Tactical. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Core. Mobile game. What mobile game? Yeah. R2. That game is like automatic. You're just hunting the monster. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't need to touch. Nice, nice. All right, boys. Well, that about wraps it up for the questions that I have. I want to thank you sincerely for being on Tilts. I enjoyed talking to you guys. I'm excited mm -hmm. for you guys to come back to the States. Uh, where can people go and find you online? What's your social media handles? Tactical, where can people follow you? You can follow me on Twitter tw and Twitch. Both are just tactical. And there's Instagram, lol tactical. Excellent. Yeah. Core, where can people find you? Uh, follow me on Twitter. T A Cool J J. Excellent. Well, thank you, boys. I really appreciate you being on Tilts. Thank, thank you. you for inviting me. And if you want to find me for whatever reason at Naughty and Sands, pretty much on all social accounts, I want to thank you for listening to or watching this episode of Tilts. If you are listening from a podcasting application, specifically Apple Podcasts, make sure you give us a five star review. Or if you want to go out of your way to go to YouTube to drop us a comment, leave us a thumbs up, some sort of interaction with Tilts. If you enjoyed the episode, we would really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Naughty and Sands. This is Tilts. Thank you for listening slash watching.